What's your minimum specification? The current grayscale chip and the future wormhole chips, they're kind of in this sort of, you know, 65, 75 watt boundary, and then you know, scale out to thousands, thousands of chips. Suddenly your communication across the whole array becomes a major part of the power discussion, right? Whereas mm -hmm. if you would have made, say, 300 watt chips, you'd be able to keep more on die and less power would be wasted on communication. How do you marry the two between you know, having, such, having a smaller chip but a wider network array? Well, the, uh, the actual Grayskull and Wormhole chips are actually fairly large. They're in Global Foundries 12. And yeah. uh, what are they, 650, 700 millimeters? 620 and 670s. Oh. Yeah. Right. And then Grayskull itself... We have a 75 watt card, like that's, you know, the chip plus DRAMs and everything. But we can also mm -hmm. run that at 150 watts at a higher frequency, higher voltage, right? And then the next generation, when we do the shrink, the computa we're raising the frequency quite a bit and the computational intensity goes up. And we're, we're shifting to higher, we'll have higher bandwidth interconnect. So it's, it's net a win, but it's a slightly higher power form factor. But it's still less than, the, you know, the current GPU kind of roadmap. And, and one of the things we do is since we keep most of the memory traffic on die, we don't need the high bandwidth memory, which has high power there. And then the Ethernet stuff, you know, you use power when you're communicating. And it really depends yeah. on the network how that's going to work. And we can do some dynamic power management. Like if the, the network ports are all pegged, we'll slow down the core a little bit to keep it balanced out. So the, the numbers on the, quote, spreadsheet all look pretty good, you know. Reality is fun because then we go build this stuff and we'll learn a lot. I've, I've seen a lot of, you know, I expect that we'll get our ass kicked on a couple of things and we'll think, man, we wish we'd done this or that. But, uh, you know, the design and simulations we've done look pretty good. So, is, is, Isn't there always low hanging fruit with every chip design though? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've never done a project. <laughs> like I still remember I, I was one of the, Pete Bannon and I were the architects of UV5. And when we were done, it was the fastest microprocessor in the world. And I was, I was so embarrassed about what I did wrong, I could barely talk about it. Like, I knew every single problem, but they still put it in the Guinness Book of World's Records. So, yeah, <laughs> it's, a funny, it's a funny phenomenon, like when you're designing stuff, because you're intimate with the details. So you, you talk about the cool stuff, but you, you, you know everything. <laughs> like, and it's always true. Like, there's, there's no way around it. And and then those bits are the ones that you shouldn't tell the press about. <laughs> yeah. I used to feel that way. Now I don't care. <laughs>